evening and welcome to Self Care Tips. I am Irene Jiroge and we're going to talk about how to keep you cool when you're under pressure. You don't have to be someone who's working in a high pressure office to encounter these things. You could be even at home, a housewife, a student, a college person, or even somebody who is just not doing anything, but you find that that in itself gives you a lot of pressure. When you're under pressure, it is important to take charge and to be in control so that it does not get worse, it does not escalate. Remember, anything we discuss here is indeed helpful, but always seek the advice of a doctor or a medical professional who will help you through some of these things. If you have ever experienced burnout, you know how important it is to always take a breather. When you don't take time off, you'll find yourself doing things over time. After three years of living like this, you could find yourself on the way to a meltdown. When you experience a meltdown, here are the signs. Number one, you become scatterbrained. You actually don't have thoughts that are in line, your thoughts are not processed, and you also look frazzled and disorganized. At the same time, you're not performing. You seem to be doing things, but you're just running on the spot, just doing things on auto mode. This is definitely a sign of meltdown. And when this happens, you can be sure that the next call you're going to get is from human resources. Therefore, take a breather. Keep your weekends for yourself. Get me time. Don't let it be always about pressure, always about work, and always about looking for money. Of course, these things are very important, but at the same time, you need space. You need a break. Take time to pray. Take time to relax. Take time to spend time away from your work, and this way, you will survive any burnout or meltdown. This is Self Care Tips on how to keep cool during times of pressure. I am Irene Joroga. Uchaguzi mkuu wa tarehe 9 Agosti utabadilisha pakubwa taswira ya kisiasa ya taifa hili. Je, hii inamaanisha nini kwa wewe mpiga kura? Kila Jumapili saa 12 jioni, jiunge na Gladys Mungai na Harith Salim kwenye makala yetu ya Kenya ya Mua ambapo pamoja na wadau mbalimbali watajadili na kudadavua kwa kina michakato ya uchaguzi. Fanya uamuzi wa busara. Usikose kutazama Kenya ya Mua kila Jumapili kwenye runinga uipendayo ya KBC Channel 1. This is Prime Edition. My name is Shiksha Aurora and welcome to the show. Indeed, and uh, well, nothing much to smile about. A nation in mourning. 
following the death of the third president of the Republic of Kenya, Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki. Tonight we bring you a, compress, a comprehensive coverage of the life and times of the late president. Stick around for that. Right. We'll be definitely bringing to you the latest in terms of how the day has been. But for now, it's time for the highlights. It is my sorrowful duty to announce to the nation the passing on of His Excellency Emilio Mwai Kibaki. Sad day as curtains fall on Kenya's third president, Mwai Kibaki. We pay tribute to our third president, President Mwai Kibaki, an outstanding economist. He has served this country for many years with diligence. An astute leader. Leaders and friends remember Kibaki. Rush for tickets. Party primaries come to an end. The governor candidate. Memorial candidate to be deputized by Philip Kaloki. Right, and our sign language interpreter is Susan Thuku. Remember, you can get in touch with us and just tell us what are some of your most memorable moments during Mzemwai Kibaki's time as president. What do you remember him for? We'd love to hear from you at KBC Channel 1, at Shiksha Aurora, at John underscore Cargo underscore M. Find us on Twitter. All right, there you go. And, uh, according to President Uru Kenyatta, Flav. Fly, the flags will fly at half mast. National mourning starts today until the day of uh, the late president's interment. So let's begin the prime edition tonight. Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta has eulogized his predecessor, predecessor, sorry, the late President Mwai Kibaki, as a great statesman. While announcing the passing on of the former head of state uh, today at State House, Nairobi, President Kenyatta described the late Kibaki as a patriot whose legacy of civic responsibility will continue to inspire generations of Kenyans. Kibaki, who was Kenya's third president, died at the age of 90. On Friday, President Uhuru Kenyatta announced the passing on of former President Mwai Emilio Kibaki, eulogizing him as a great leader and a true embodiment of a statesman. It is my sorrowful duty to announce to the nation the passing on of His Excellency Emilio Mwai Kibaki. His Excellency Mwai Kibaki lived a dedicated life of politics and we salute a notable father figure in the chronicles of our nation. The president said the legacy of the late former head of state shall be remembered throughout all generations. Emilio Mwai Kibaki was a quintessential patriot whose legacy of civic responsibility will continue to inspire generations of Kenyans. Following the death of the late former head of state, President Kenyatta declared a period of national mourning, including the flying of national flags at half-mast until a state funeral is held. 
that the flag of the Republic of Kenya shall be flown at half-mast at State House and all Kenyan diplomatic missions, public buildings, public grounds, all military bases, posts, and stations on all naval vessels of the Republic of Kenya and elsewhere throughout the entire territory of the Republic of Kenya from today. The president said the former president will be accorded a state funeral with full military honors and protocols. A special committee has been established to plan the burial of the late president. Since leaving office, Kibaki has been in and out of hospital. His contributions in the Ministry of Finance and as vice president saw Kenya's economy grow steadily, fueled by a commodities boom, as well as fiscal and monetary policies that were the backbone of his economic philosophy. He breathed his last at the age of 90. Purity Museo, Prime Edition. Now, leaders have been reacting to the news of the death of former President Mwai Kibaki, heaping praise on the fallen Kenya's third head of state. Deputy President William Ruto has uh, eulogized uh, the former president as a top economist and a man who uh, has distinguished uh, himself with the great legacy uh, that he has left behind. ODM leader Raila Odinga says the late former president had an impeccable team spirit and was a motivator for his ministries. He has some of the reactions of uh, the leaders. As we give you a comprehensive coverage of uh, the life and times of uh, the late president, uh, that's Moai Kibaki, the third head of state. We are looking at it not too long. Uh, the state is in mourning following the death of uh, Stanley Emilio Moai Kibaki. Kenyans totally disheartened uh, by his passing and uh, recollecting his achievements during his presidency, as well as uh, the roles in the public service. Absolutely, and netizens have taken to social media to offer their condolences to the family. Take a look at what Kenyans have been saying on social media. Lost a great man. Remember, about 20 years ago, he changed the economy from a zero digit to a, a nine digit economy. We've lost one of the guys that we can classify as a hero. Because for the first time I had the name Kibaki, I associate Kibaki with development. I thank him because he's the one who put down uh, the, 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 the price of uh, fertilizer. And two, he bought our maize uh, on, on, on a very good uh, note. Puti apota apota hakuwa mejulikana katika taifa letu. Lakini mwishimiwa Kibaki aliweza kutambua hiyo watu na kwa wapatia kazi. We also remember Kibaki for the thicker super highway which did not cost us a lot. Kibaki was the best man. He could not bother maybe following these things of discrimination. Tuliona kama wa Kenya wamefaidika sana kimaendeleo. Tuliona mambo makuu aliyafanya akiwa uongozini hapa Jamhuri ya Kenya. Alikuwa rais wa Msalendo aliyojenga taifa yetu ya Kenya na aliyofanya mambo mengi ya mahana. Akaleta uthabiti katika hali ya kisiasa. Na ni raisi ambaye tunamkumbuka kwa kuwa mpole. He has brought free and primary education and secondary school. He has opened some old institutions. Uh, some old institutions were, it, it has converted to the university and the institution. During the late, during the Mze, Mze has paid so many things and we really appreciate whatever he has done in Kenya here. I did a lot of uh, your reactions uh, on what you remember most about uh, the passing, on of uh, what you remember about the times of uh, the late President Mwai Kibaki. A lot remember the thicker super highway. A lot remember him as an economist. And mm. this, a lot, uh, even when it comes to his light side, he was a comedian of sorts. Uh, oh, we yes. shall be looking at that in a too long. We look at the profile. Absolutely, still remember, you know, some of his speeches yep. and some of his quotes. I have to say that. Um, 
he was a very very powerful but at the same time as you said you know he had his moments yeah. where he would show his uh, human side Absolutely. and he would show um, his character as as being you know having a lot of humor Absolutely. He was was totally humorous uh, all right let's look at the profile of uh, the late Mwai Kibaki Mwai Kibaki Napa Kwamba Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki was born on 15th November 1931 in Gatuyani village, Odaya, in present-day Nyeri County. Kibaki worked as a lecturer at Makerere University in Uganda. Kibaki! Uteme! Na wanaengi! Kibaki returned to Kenya to become Kano's executive officer and help draft Kenya's independence constitution. In 1962, Kibaki was elected the member of parliament for Donom constituency, present-day Makadara. Subsequently, he was appointed assistant minister for finance and chairman of the Economic Planning Commission in 1963. He played a key role in drafting the famous 1965 sessional paper number 10 on African socialism and its application to planning in Kenya. He will be promoted to become Minister for Commerce and Industry in 1966 and later Minister for Finance and Economic Planning in 1969 after he was re-elected to Parliament to represent Donham constituency. That we shall have to divert a very significant proportion of our resources towards expenditures for defence. And thus this, this means that we will not be spending as much as we would like to do on uh, uh, other economic services. He was overwhelmingly elected of a member of parliament in 1974, getting re-elected to parliament in 1979, 1983, 1988, 1992, 1997, 2002 and 2007. When Daniel Arap Moi succeeded Jomo Kenyatta as country's president in 1972, Kibaki was named Kenya's vice president but retained his position as finance minister. He was moved to the Ministry of Home Affairs in 1982. A fallout with President Moi in March 1988 saw Kibaki demoted from the vice presidency and moved to the Ministry of Health as minister. Despite the fallout with Moi, Kibaki will remain loyal to the president and the ruling party Kano. Hence it came as a surprise for many when he resigned from government in December 1991, days after the repeal of Section 2A of the Constitution, which restored multipartism in Kenya. His resignation would then see him form the Democratic Party DP, with which he used to vie for presidency in 1992 against Moi, Kenneth Matiba, and Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. Kibaki came in third. He ran for presidency again in 1997, this time round finishing second behind Moi and becoming the leader of the official opposition in 1998. Moi Kibaki will give the presidency another shot in 2002, this time around, boosted by a host of other opposition parties under the National Rainbow Alliance. And through to the saying, third time is the charm, on 27th December 2007, Kibaki and NAC registered a landslide victory over Kano with 62% of the votes compared to his competitor, Huru Kenyatta's 31%. How is Katimiza? Hakuna Mabu Amara to his Katimiza? The win brought an end to Kano's four decades rule since independence. Kibaki got re elected in 2007 for his second and final term as the president of Kenya. In fact, just looking through some of uh, the comments and of course some of the messages, the condolences that leaders have been giving all day um, regarding the death of late President Mwai Kibaki. All right, and uh, Deputy President uh, William Ruto has eulogized the former president as uh, an economist, a top economist as a matter of fact, and a man who distinguished himself with great legacy that uh, he has left behind. ODM leader Raila Odinga also says the late former president had an impeccable team spirit and was a motivator for his ministers. 
Here are some of the reactions from the leaders. Take a look. Puara today, without him, he has laid a solid foundation, a foundation upon which the rest of us leaders today, we are building on. And he has been a great inspiration. He has served this country for many years with diligence, with fortitude, with honesty and transparency. There are very few leaders, even within the African continent, with a spirit of selflessness and singular sense of purpose and service to his people more than Mui Kibaki. We remember him fondly as one of the most detribalized public leaders in this country. He stood out, made friends far and wide in Kenya. Inchi yote na dunia imepokeza imepoteza mtu ambaye angeweza kuangaliwa na watu kusoma mengi na ushauri wake ulikuwa wa hali ya juu sana His Excellency Emilio Mwai Kibaki captured the imagination of our country restored hope and rebuilt an economy that was on its knees Prince Kibaki taught uh, people of this country and of the region uh, great lessons among them that uh, service to mankind was not um, an opportunity for personal aggrandizement and that uh, opportunity to do public service and public good was rare. He was a statesman, statesman that was unique, that he listened to what people were saying before he made a decision. Now, Mwai Kibaki may never have dreamt of becoming the third president of Kenya if his background is anything to go by. Well, Safina Chiang Oma traces the roots of the son of Kikuyu peace and famines in the former Nyeri district of Central Province, whose academic brilliance propelled him to prestigious learning institutions, both locally and internationally, and later served as an assistant lecturer at Makerere University prior to joining the world of politics. He was born on 15th November 1931 in Dunguri village, Odaya division in the then Nyeri district of Central Province, now Nyeri County. His parents, Kibaki Gadanji and Teresia Wanjiku, were peace and farmers. Even though he was baptized as Emilio Stanley by Italian missionaries in his youth, he has always been known as Mwai Kibaki. He began his academic journey at Gatuyaini School, which he attended for the first two years, completing what was then called Sub A and Sub B, equivalent of Grade 1 and Grade 2. He would later join Karima Mission School for the three more classes of primary and between 1944 and 1946, he proceeded to Madari School, now Nyeri High School, for standard four to six. Aside from his academic prowess, he acquired skills in carpentry, masonry, and agriculture. He joined Mangu High School in 1947 and passed his O-level examination with a maximum of six points in 1950. In his final year in Mangu, Kibaki considered becoming a soldier, perhaps inspired by the veterans of the First and Second World Wars in his native village. He, however, opted to shelve his ambition and instead joined Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda, to study economics, history, and political science. His academic brilliance saw him graduate best in his class in 1955 with a first-class honors degree in economics. After his graduation, he took up an appointment as assistant sales manager Shell Company of East Africa, Uganda Division. It was while working there that he earned a scholarship to pursue a postgraduate studies in any British university. He 
joined the prestigious London School of Economics for a BSc in Public Finance, graduating with a distinction. In 1958, he went back to Makerere University, this time as an assistant lecturer and taught in the economics department. In early 1960, Kibaki left academia for active politics by giving up his job at Makerere and returning to Kenya to begin his journey into politics as the executive officer of Kenya African National Union Party. In 1961, Kibaki married Lucy Mudoni, a daughter of a church minister who was then a secondary school head teacher. The couple was blessed with four children, Judy Wanjiku, Jimmy Kibaki, David Kagai and Tony Githinji. Lucy, however, died on 26th of April 2016 at 80 years at Boomer Cromwell Hospital in London after a brief hospitalization at the Nairobi Hospital for chest pains. He was a committed member of the Roman Catholic Church and attended mostly Sunday afternoon services at the Consolata Shrines Catholic Church in Nairobi. He enjoyed playing golf and was a member of the Mudaiga Golf Club. For Prime Edition, I'm Safin Acheng Oma. All right, uh, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, quite an illustrious journey. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and as we continue to give you a comprehensive coverage of the life and times of uh, the late uh, President Moai Kibak, continue sharing your feedback. What are those handles again? Absolutely, at KBC Channel 1, at Shiksha Aurora, at John underscore Cargo underscore M. Talk to us on Facebook, talk to us on Twitter as well in your thoughts and remember you can also tell us what you remember the late Mwai Kibaki for. Alright, let's take a breather. Our Prime Edition is back in a moment. Ili kupata waruminane kama skiza chun kwenye simu yako, bonyeza star 811 star 815 hash. Nina hakika kwamba hakuna kinachoweza kukutenga na upendo wa mwenyezi mungu. Si kifo, si malaika, si vitu tulivyo kuwa navyo au tutakavyo kuwa navyo. Si mamlaka au chuchote kitakacho umbwa. Waruminane kwa. Thelathini na nane hadi thelathini na tisa. Kupata warumi nane, bonyeza star 811 star 815 hash. Star 811 star 815 hash. Did you know that while many road traffic crashes are avoidable, human behavior continues to be the leading cause? Stop these crashes before they stop you. Ensure that you adhere to traffic rules to prevent these crashes. Always observe the fatal six to be safe. When driving, please ensure that your speed is within the stipulated limits, the road ahead is clear before overtaking, stick to your lane, keep left unless carefully overtaking, ensure that you are well rested before driving on long distance, and never drink and drive. Usalama Barabarani starts with you. Fika Salama. This message is brought to you by NTSA and the European Union. Kenya has come a long way in ICT development. The government set up the Universal Service Fund to bring communication services to remote and hard to reach parts of the country. We are ensuring that every Kenyan is connected to business, to better education, to better healthcare, to a better life so that no one is left behind in our journey to a digitally transformed nation. Communications Authority of Kenya, opening your world.
Welcome back. Now, former President Mwai Kibaki left office in 2013 after serving for two five-year terms as head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed forces from 2002 to 2013. Well, during his tenure, uh, the former president, uh, Mwai Kibaki, presided over significant growth uh, in various sectors of the economy, with his greatest moment being the promulgation of the new constitution. However, Mwai Kibaki's legacy was marred when irregularities during during a re-election bid ended in deadly violence in 2007. Ben Chumba has the details. Mwai Kibaki, na hapa kwamba. On 30th December 2002, Mwai Kibaki took the oath of office as Kenya's third president on a wheelchair in front of hundreds of thousands of Kenyans at Uhuru Park in Nairobi. With his right leg in a cast after a December 3rd car accident at Machakos Junction, Kibaki swore to conduct his duties as president without fear or favor or malice. Kibaki will then reward Wamalwa Kijana with the vice presidency for his contribution to his presidential win. On January 3rd, 2003, Kibaki named his first cabinet where many of his loyalists who had campaigned for him when he was recovering from the accident made it to the list. Among them were Raila Odinga, Martha Karua, Kalonzo Musyoka, Charity Ngilu, Mudia Wori, Lina Jebiki Limo, Naji Balala, Kiraitu Murungi, Anyang Nyongo, Chirau Ali Makwere, Mukisa Kitui, and Ochilo Ayako. However, the year 2007-2008 was no ordinary year for Kenyans after a disputed election where more than 1,500 people died and 650,000 others were displaced. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan mediated the talks between the government and the opposition where a power-sharing agreement was reached reintroducing the position of Prime Minister into the government. In the chaotic aftermath of the 2007-2008 unrest, Kibaki would find himself in an unusual position of presiding over a referendum that overwhelmingly endorsed a new constitution aimed at averting a repeat of the violence. Ben Chumba, Prime Edition. And remember, we asked you to share what you thought, uh, you know, you remember the former president, Mwai Kibaki, for um, Kago. We were just discussing his wit, his humor, you know, some of his famous quotes from his speeches. Never lacked, um, never a dull moment, actually, when he was giving his speeches. Absolutely. And uh, speaking about that, the former president, uh, known for, as you mentioned, his eloquence, I saw him uh, impress his audience with uh, his clarity in articulating government policies. Now, these are excerpts of some of those speeches. The High Premier Mwai Kibaki placed on education was exemplified by how he emphatically pushed for free primary education. This he began as an election campaign pledge and fulfilled it soon after being sworn in as Kenya's third president. <laughs> As a former finance minister, he knew only too well the challenges brought by rapid population growth. Viwanda vijengwe kote katika Kenya, na sio tu katika mijimikubwa ya Kenya, vile na robi na Mombasa. Still on responsible parenting, he cautioned the youth against excessive drinking. I have no reason but to appeal to you, please, do not yield to the field of drinking. Do, I say this not because I don't drink, no, I do. He used words that left many in wonder. If you just hang around and don't register, you are useless. <laughs> No, true. You can't be useful. You can't be any use. Because you are not participating in the development of Kenya. Kibaki was in many ways unlike his predecessor, Daniel Moy, who was vocal on many issues of national importance. I appeal to all political leaders and their supporters to engage in peaceful campaigns. Let us all remember 
that Kenya's collective destiny is far more important than the interest of any individual person or group. He, however, on a few occasions seized the opportunity to set the record straight as he did during the clamor by the proscribed Mombasa Republican Army to have the coast secede from Kenya. Hakuna haja mtu yeyote awe liya nani yao nani kujaribu kutuharibia inchi. Hakuna mtu wataweza hiyo. Wana inchi wa Kenya wa mejitoa na wako tayari Na hakuna mtu wabawe ni yeyote ambaye ataweza kuleta fujo katika nchi ya Kenya. Purity Museo, Prime Edition. Some very interesting moments there. Absolutely. It was never a dull moment uh, with mm. the late president. Well, an astute manager. That is what uh, Kamina Secretary Mutai Kagwe remembers uh, the late president for. And of course, the spiritual archbishop, Anthony Muheria, reminisces a, a dear friend, senior citizen ambassador, Francis Muthara. Uh, that's what they know him as. I told this in the memory of the former president, Mwai Kibaki. Let me start by saying that uh, uh, president, um, the late president, Mwai Kibaki, was always a, a father figure to us. His age was such that uh, he was almost my, in fact, he was my father's age. And consequently, in our relationship with him, way back to when uh, we were young people around the town, and he was then the finance minister in, in, in the government of uh, late President Moy, he was a man we all admired as we grew up. And as young UPs, as young uh, uh, men in Nyeri, we used to go to Nyeri Club, where we would find him and greet him and uh, admire him for the way he held himself and the way he worked. Uh, when he launched the Democratic Party, some of us, I was then working for the Standard newspaper, I, I, I volunteered to work as his um, uh, PR. Uh, I remember uh, working on his posters. I remember organizing uh, for his uh, uh, photography on top of uh, uh, what is now Integrity House uh, for the presidential poster that we were eventually printing at Karaprint and following up there with Gengi Moigai to see that uh, it, was, uh, it was printed. So for us, he, he represented aspiration. We really wanted to be like him. And um, uh, in doing so, we, we, he, he led us in a, in, a very calm, in a very calm way. As I said, he symbolizes. He symbolizes tolerance. He symbolized humility. And um, it is no wonder then that those of us including uh, current president uh, Uhuru, you know, really, you know, admired and liked um, the way that um, uh, Kibaki led us. Mm -hmm. It is during Kibaki's tenure that the world came to realize that people can send money from one person to the other using their mobile phone. Tell us more about that, innov that innovation and what, and, and what role uh, uh, did the president uh, play in uh, realizing that dream? Well, there, there, there are two things in connection with uh, mobile money. First is uh, the building of the infrastructure that can allow, you know, for, mob, for mobile money and that can allow for the kind of communication uh, that we do today and as cheaply as we do today in terms of implementation of the construction of a fiber optic cable. And um, I, rem I still remember, you know, being out in, a, in, in the UAE and um, being unable to find where our, 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 our fiber optic keeper was going to land in Fujaira. And I, I, I asked Abbas and Hussein, who was then serving, I said, Hussein, um, how do we get the government of UAE to agree to, for Kenya to connect this fiber optic cable here? And he said, if you can get a letter from President Kibaki and uh, to the ruler of, uh, of Dubai, then we can get this, this show done. And I picked up my phone. I telephoned uh, Ipu, who was then um, uh, serving as, uh, in, you know, as uh, in, in President Kibaki's state, uh, state House Comptroller. And I said to him, I need to talk to the president. Because Kibaki did not carry a phone around with him. Uh, and he talked to the president. And he said, OK. And he walked to his office. And he says, yeah, huh? 
huko iko namna gani and i said hapa ni joto mzee lakini iko joto ingine nataka usaidizi <laughs> and i explained to him that i needed a letter from him and he said that letter camp you know nani atalete so i explained i explained to him that uh, you know ps bitange demo was going to pick up the letter from him and bring it to fujaira mm -hmm. that's how i mean to to uh, to to dubai that's how we got the, the fujaira connection without him it would never have been possible. Mm -hmm. And then came uh, the launch of um, uh, the, the M-Pesa. Remember there was a lot of debate around M-Pesa that uh, how can Safaricom hold money for people when it is not a bank? Yeah. You know, so do, you, do, do they need a banking license? Mm -hmm. uh, but they can't get a, a banking license because they are not they a bank. bank. Yeah. yeah, so then, uh, you know, the Catch-22 situation. Mm -hmm. And when we explained it, both myself and uh, uh, Amos Kimunya, who was then finance minister, and we explained to him, he said, listen, a technology, uh, we, we, we will never be able to make laws for technology before it comes. You can only make laws for technology once it has come. And consequent, which let's go ahead. He approved that we go ahead with the launch of uh, M-Pesa. And uh, as we go on, we will appreciate what needs to be done you know, for the control and management of M-Pesa. Again, without him, it would never have been done. When he left office um, in 2013, uh, did you also keep contact? Yes, we did. I mean, we would meet occasionally in very many in functions. Um, uh, but, but don't forget, at that time, he was also, he was also resting. But on many occasions, when he would be in Yeri, when he would be in functions, when he would be in uh, church functions, we would meet and, um, you know, and engage each other. Um, so for me, uh, it is the loss of a mentor. Um, and I think for Kenyans, it is really the loss of a great, great leader. But he wasn't just a leader in term, if just for Kenya, or for that matter, for Nyeri. He was a leader for East Africa, he was an admired, admired person across the globe. And let's not forget that he was first admired, not even because of his uh, presidency, but of his knowledge of the economy, his understanding of, uh, of, of, of economics and what a nation can be as a result of uh, economic leadership. So uh, for, for us, I think, for us in my generation, and those of us who worked uh, under uh, President uh, Kibaki, I think he's a great loss. You feel like uh, a little part of you, you know, and a little part of your leadership vision is gone. And then you ask yourself, you know, now that that has happened, you know, we have always looked at um, the age group of um, the Mwai Kibaki, there was, the, you know, others who have passed on. And you ask yourself, now that they are gone, who are we looking at? And then suddenly you look behind you and you see there's, we look ahead of you and you see there's nobody, you know, and uh, the realization that um, you are the Wazes now, you know, is one that is uh, scary, but it is one that also comes with responsibility. And for us to emulate and lead in the, in the manner that uh, was set for us as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a standard, you know, as a yardstick, on which we must all reach. If you were to describe uh, the late president in one or two words, how would you describe him? A humble man of God. He was not a priest. He was not a preacher. But he was a humble man of God. What are you going to miss about the late president? I think just the knowledge that he's not around that uh, you can you, you, you can say, you know, at a personal level, for example, I, I can go to Judy and say, hey, we want to go and see him there. You know, the fact that you can't do that is, is, uh, is sad. It's really sad. Yeah. And I just, and I, and I really want to, you know, just wish um, the members of his family who I know well, I, I really wish them well, and I hope that uh, God gives them strength to overcome uh, this very sad period.
was the first duration of the Kenyan uh, development strategy and the broad-based development of the country, allowing uh, or encouraging private sector development in the country and really supporting the other essential services in history, the history of this country. Um, you know, he delivered the second constitution of this country. He delivered the economic and the social, I mean, the, the vision 2030 for this country. The constitution really entrenched democracy, human rights. It entrenched freedoms of expression in this country and uh, brought about um, devolution, which is key uh, to the all-inclusive uh, development strategy for this country. During his time, we saw um, continuous, sustained growth of above 6%. In fact, the target was to reach 10%, but he left at one of the highest economic growth rates, 7.1%. So, he, the strategy, his strategy focused on essential services like education expanded education at unprecedented speed, rate. You know, primary education became free and the primary enrollment became almost universal. He expanded, doubled, more than doubled the secondary school capacity. Before there were Secondary school was limited to only boarding schools. But he opened up space for these schools, secondary schools. And that more than doubled. He increased the universities from six to 22 universities. You remember, like uh, during the referendum of 2005, government lost. At that time he was, uh, he was in Mary and I was here. I called him because I didn't sleep that night. And very early in the morning where I waited up to seven, then I called him. I said, Your Excellency, you you had wanted to come today afternoon, but I proposed that you come in the morning so that you can uh, address the nation. He told me, yes, I'm preparing to come, I'm coming. So you prepare a, the speech, you know, the hard, I mean the speech, draft, the normally prepared draft. And I told him, Your Excellency, you know, we are really shocked. You have done so much. The country, has, we were doing the growth. Everything was up in terms of performance. But how we lost the, the you know, the referendum, I could not understand. He's, he told me, don't, don't worry. He, 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 he was never frightened or shocked. We do the and So we start another chapter. <laughs> that was Kibaki. He came and of course addressed the nation and he gave at least assurance that the government has accepted the results and now we shall start preparing um, for what Kenyans want.
and yet with his wit he has always held this country together he never took something so seriously as to think that the world was coming to an end he lightened the moment and always pushed us and pushed every Kenyan to look forward with hope to solutions even to the worst crisis that we as a country have always faced he himself in his personal life has faced many crises those moments when before the election as you recall when he had the accident and took it with courage with boldness and with peace and calm and serenity without putting too much emphasis at what will happen and thank god with a great deep sense of godliness we remember our former president Mwai Kibaki as a very godly man he is a man who we so often in consolata shrine for mass he is a man who never put aside no shade of of showing his deep faith in god and often times would reach out to us the religious leaders not only to ask us for prayers but also to encourage us so that we may pray for this nation i recall to he is a man of great patience in the transitions that have happened in the government when he took over and even after his second election he always took it with style with great statesmanship with nobility but again with a great sense of the value of the country of the nation and even with the various challenges that came for example after the 2007 post election violence he was willing to humbly seek a solution for the good of this nation and he didn't think he was a loser or a gainer he didn't count himself as having won but counted that the nation won and this we are greatly indebted i say he was a man of great patience my today memory when i had decided to resign from the judicial service commission which i had the honor that he undeserved honor that he appointed me to this judicial service commission and had decided to resign and i called if i could see and indeed the next day i was told yes i could see him through his secretary to go to harambe house to meet him unfortunately as I was coming there was a terrible jam in pangani and i called the office of the president harambe and i said uh, then it was professor wanjohi told him sorry i'm caught in this traffic i can't make it i said don't worry after the president he wait for you he would delay his lunch i kept him waiting he was waiting for one entire hour and when i came of course everyone was frantic rushing me to the office and i entered his office he was calm and i told him i'm very sorry i really apologize he said don't worry just take a seat and let us talk he didn't fire me for coming late he didn't fire me from having waited for an entire hour he's the president of this nation instead he may be comfortable and we spoke for an entire hour which made him late for his lunch where i explained to him why I had to make this decision he took it very understanding a man of patience a man who is understanding and that did not in any way mar our relation as he would invite me for another moment in the discussions on things which he thought that i could make even my humble contribution he had great respect for all church leaders i want to single out especially our dear cardinal john jue many of the catholic bishops but he also had great relations with archbishop zingi with uh, zimbi and others other leaders from the methodist church and even some of the muslim uh, leaders religious leaders he had no discrimination and listened with a very keen ear he was a wonderful listener we lose a great statesman but above all we lose a father a man who all these nations were both amused at when he made those jokes but all of us admired and loved him as an elder and a father because he came out as a man of equanimity a man who was balanced in his character in his statement and in his leadership we pray that god may give him a great reward for the services given to this nation i'm sure also for the great services given to his family 
to us also who in one way have had some relation with him that the Lord may reward him with eternal happiness and give him great joy where he had always longed as a good Christian to be. We also want to ask and pray for his family that they may be consoled, that they may find comfort and that the Lord may renew that joy that they know that their father has gone to the place he has longed for and their grandfather and their great-grandfather. This is the wonderful news that while we are mourning, we are also happy to God who has rested him. In these last three years, his health has been not well. And so even many times we were worried about his health and we always prayed for him, always trying to send messages to his family of encouragement. And so it's a rest after a long service to people and mankind, humankind, and to this country. May Mwai Kibaki, Emilio Mwai Kibaki, rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace. And may we Kenyans admire the great statesmanship, great leader, a man of great humility, who never forced his way, who always sought to convince others. A man who also was willing to humble himself in moments when it was called for, for the good of the nation and others. That's a great lesson for all of us Kenyans. Humility, not pride, not ostentation, not power, but service, humility, fear of God, respect, and love for others. May God rest his soul in eternal growth, in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one more question. How can Kenyans... Uh, that's uh, Bishop Anthony Muheria reminiscing about his interactions with the late President Mwai Kibaki. A little earlier, uh, Senior Citizen Ambassador Francis Mudara also sharing his, and of course, Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe also giving his thoughts on uh, the life and times and interactions with the late President Mwai Kibaki. All right, it's time for a short commercial break, but we'll be back in just a moment. Don't go too far. Nana is my name. My daughter is constantly online these days because, well, it's the new normal way for them to learn. Now, whether here at home or in school, it is important to work with them online so that you find out more about what they're looking for. Also, find out what is out there because the things I have seen online... So for me, Passwords on gadgets is a must. Being fooled online? Get Cyber Smart to enjoy safe entertainment and education online. The Communications Authority of Kenya. Mawasiliano Kwetu, Gufu Kwako. Welcome back. Now, the late President Mwai Kibaki is credited with turning around the Kenyan economy, which had faced years of stagnation. Now, when he took over from uh, the late President Daniel Arab Moy, the economy had expanded by 0.6% uh, in the year 2002. During his swearing-in, Kibaki vowed to revive economic growth through increased investment in infrastructure and agriculture and reforming the country's investment environment. And by the time uh, Kibaki handed over the reign of leadership to President Uhuru Kenyatta, the national budget had grown to, listen to this, uh, to 1.2 trillion shillings, up from uh, 321 billion shillings in 2002. Regina Manyara traces Kibaki's economic model and fiscal planning. Take a look. Be Mwai Kibaki na apa kwamba. When former President Mwai Kibaki was sworn in in December 2002, the Kenyan economy was facing major challenges characterized by slow GDP growth of less than 1%, revenue collection of lower than 200 billion shillings, poor infrastructure, and poor investment climate. During his swearing in, Kibaki singled out poverty and food security. 
unemployment, deterioration of the education sector, lack of access to basic and affordable health services, as well as a constitutional review as some of his immediate assignments. Fellow Kenyans, let us all rededicate ourselves to fulfilling the dream of our founding fathers. Indeed, may, indeed, may the new constitutional, constitutional dispensation be our shield and defender as we strive to conquer poverty, disease and ignorance. This was powered by increased government expenditure, doubling in Kibaki's first term in office to hit 700 billion shillings in the 2007-2008 financial year, to 1.2 trillion shillings by the time he was leaving office in 2013. The launch of this program marks an important milestone in my government's efforts to secure a bright future for the children and youth of Kenya. Free primary education was Kibaki's election promise in 2002, and he delivered with about 150,000 children returning to school in January 2003. In his last budget of 2013-2014, 288.5 billion shillings was set aside for roads, expanding generation capacity and access to electricity, modern national ICT infrastructure, and and expansion of ports and rail facilities. When we took over our budget was less than 180 billion Kenya shillings. We are not talking of 1.4 trillion. Trillion, if you ask to count one, two, three trillion, you take 1,000 years. That's what I'm told. Termed as an astute economist, under Kibaki's rule, the economy experienced steady growth, where GDP growth was in 2011. 4.4% with income tax collection having more than quadrupled to 160 billion shillings. However, during his tenure, government's expenditure outpaced revenue collection. We will not tolerate those who have no respect for human life or private property. They are, moreover, our country believes in the rule of law and therefore those who are victims of violence should not take the law into their own hands but should report the perpetrators to the law enforcement authorities. The late former president Mwai Kibaki will be remembered for many things, among them steering the country's economy amid the meltdown in 2008-2009 due to the effects of the post-election violence and the inauguration of the new constitution that introduced the devolved system of governance. <laughs> Katiba hii tumekuwa tukipigania for 20 years. Miaka 20. Regina Manyara reporting for KBC Channel 1. All right, of course, now let's take a look at what people have been saying on social media. Remember, there's been some tweets. Leaders have um, sent out the messages of condolences as well. You know, just you and I as well. Ab Every Kenyan absolutely. has something to say regarding the death of the third president of Kenya, Mze Mwai Kibaki. Mourning the passing of their third president. These are seen thousands of posts shared on social media following the announcement. At half mast, so the flag will remain till the day of sunset. A gloomy day in the hearts of many. Feelings of desolation as Kenyans mourn a former president, Mwai Kibaki, who was cherished by many. A funny man as well, who never failed to make a dull moment lighter. <laughs> Jerry tweeted, Mwai Kibaki was such a president with a good sense of humor, RIP. Indeed, most people will forever remember him for his candor. Kenyans mourn his demise, but greatly appreciate the changes he brought to the nation. 
Maria wrote, in the history books, he will go down a selfless leader. Economic uplift, free primary education, better infrastructure, youth fund were realized during his tenure. Fair V. Welmzemwai Kibaki, a statesman. Nick, millions of Kenyans attended school, were lifted from poverty, saw a tarmac road, got electricity, got to school. The list goes on due to the selflessness of Mr. Kibaki. He gave hope to a nation. May he rest in peace. Weekly tweeted, while some people were here, they left footprints in our hearts, and we are never the same. President Emilio Mwai Kibaki is an icon to be remembered. We pray for you, close family, and Kenya at large, that you will gather strength and abound in grace in the days ahead. Be still, Kenya. Kijana ya Atwoli posts, I can only appreciate the late Mwai Kibaki for establishing free education in Kenya. Wow. Voice of Oma Bay tweeted, What a loss to Kenya. You are forever a champion and patriot. We will miss you, President Mwai Kibaki. Rest in peace. Crying and heartbroken emoji. For Panadol, Mwai Kibaki is dead. There once lived an incredible statesman. Although the curtains are falling on the former president Mwai Kibaki, Kenyans say the impact of his services shall live on. I am Teresa Mutai. Now, aside from being a great economist, did you know that former President Mwai Kibaki had a love for golf and served as patron of the Kenya Golf Union from 1978? Well, it was during his presidency that reforms in the administration of sport at government level were jump-started. Here is a sports viewpoint of Kibaki, of the Kibaki presidency. Take a look. It was in former President Mwai Kibaki's first cabinet that sports gained stature in government. Honorable Najib Balala was appointed as Minister for Gender, Sport and Social Services. This was followed by the creation of the Sports Stadium Management Board to manage facilities in the country. It was also during his presidency that a sports act was initiated and it came to life in 2013. On the 5th of July 2003, the former president was at the stadium as Dennis Oliet scored the winning goal against Cape Verde to send the Harambe Stars to the 2004 Africa Cup of Nations. In 2007, Kenya successfully hosted the World Cross Country Championship in Mombasa as President Kibaki's first term came to a close. In 2010, he officially opened the African Senior Athletics Championships at the Nyao National Stadium, where Kenya topped the medal table, scooping 25 medals, 10 of them being gold. In 2009, he got to meet the world record holder in the 100 meters using Bolt, who was in the country to adopt a cheetah. And he also received the FIFA World Cup trophy. From a family perspective, the former president's son Jimmy and his grandson Mwai Kibaki Jr. were ardent motocross riders and represented the country in different classes. From 1978, former president Kibaki served as a patron of the Kenya Golf Union, and Mutaiga Golf Club was his favorite hangout. As president, he attended the Kenya Open Golf Championship event with his last one in office taking place at the current country club in February of 2013. In 2018, he was among the 12 persons inducted into the Kenya Open Golf Limited Hall of Fame. In his honor, the Nyeri Club hosts the annual Kibaki Trophy Tournament. The trophy was donated to the club in 1976 when the late Kibaki was Minister for Finance. To sportsmen, the legacy of the former president is a defined cash reward scheme for medalists at global events that has been retained to date. May his soul rest in eternal peace. For Prime Edition, I am Daniel Wahome. Now, Orange Democratic Movement leader Raila Odinga has left for the United States of America for a week-long visit. According to the ODM party, Raila is expected to hold meetings with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. State Department for National Security Council, and the Kenyan diaspora. He is expected to outline his vision for Kenya, as well as underline the historic importance of the strategic relationships between Kenya and the United States of America.
the oh, ODM yeah. leader, is accompanied by, among other leaders, Nar Kenya leader Martha Karua, Governors Wycliffe Oparanya, Diritu Murivi, and James Ongwai. Now, former Nairobi Deputy Governor Polycap Igathe has been picked to fly the Azimiola Omoja One Kenya Coalition Party ticket in the Nairobi governorship race. Well, Polycap, who will be deputized by former Kibwezi uh, Member of Parliament, Philip Kaloki, was settled on after a meeting chaired by Azimio presidential candidate Raila Odinga and Waipa leader Colonel Zomosioka. Zainab Said now reports. The Azimio La Umoja Council has brokered a deal to have Polycap Igade fly the coalition's flag in Nairobi on 9th August. Igade will be deputized on the ballot by Philip Kaloki after Timothy Wanyonyi agreed to seek re-elected in Westlands. The governor candidate is going to be Mr. Polycap Igade. He will be deputized by Professor Kaloki. ODM Secretary General Edwin Sifuna has been nominated to vie for Senator while Esther Pasaris will fly the ODM flag in the race for Nairobi County Women Representative. Uh, the Women uh, Representative is going to be one Esther, Madam Esther Pasaris. And Mary Katungatia is going to be appointed as the President Special Envoy on Trade to the immediate effect. Friday's lineup comes after days of political grandstanding with leaders allied to Westlands Member of Parliament vowing to accept nothing less than a gubernatorial ticket. Friday's deal to that effect halted ODM nominations in Westlands and Kibra, where Tim Wanyonye and Bernardo Koth were handed direct party tickets. Richard Ngatia, who was overlooked for the Jubilee ticket in the race for Nairobi governor, has been appointed as the president's special envoy on trade. For Prime Edition, I'm Zainab Said. Moving on, the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition says it will reform the Kenya Revenue Authority to make it what the coalition terms as people-friendly. The coalition's presidential flag bearer, William Bruto, says small businesses have for a long time suffered in the hands of, of the authority they are through taxes and that the reforms will seek to empower small-scale traders in line with the coalition's bottom-up economic model. Wycliffe Oketch reports. The Kenya Kwanza Coalition on Friday held a consultative economic forum in Kakamega County with a view to understand the challenges facing the locals. It is here that the coalition's principles promise to reform the Kenya Revenue Authority to make it more friendly to small-scale businesses. The coalition's presidential flag bearer and deputy president William Ruto maintained that his proposed bottom-up economic model will spur economic development in the country by empowering small-scale enterprises, which he observed is the lifeline of many Kenyans. We are going to provide a subsidy program that will make sure that farmers have access to subsidized fertilizer as a means of reducing the cost of production of our basic food items so that we can lower the cost of living in Kenya by making sure that food is affordable. The Kenya Kwanzaa leaders also promised major transformation in education, agriculture and health sectors. ANC and Ford Kenya party leaders Musalia Mudavadi and Moses Wetangula used the opportunity to defend their decision to join forces with the Deputy President William Ruto, saying their unity is for the benefit of the community and by extension the entire country. <laughs> Negotiate that we shall 
you have a government coming in that listens, that is responsive, that cares, that will be participatory, that will be results oriented. Meanwhile, the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition has postponed all political engagements to allow time for the mourning of the departed former president Mwai Kibaki. For Easy Friday, I am Wycliffe Okej. All right, taking a look at the business stories today, non-deposit taking SACOs have appealed to the SACO Society's regulatory authority to review the proposed levies considering the current high cost of living. Barakaye to SACO CEO Thomas Osoro says SACO members who do not have a stable monthly income are continuously defaulting on loans, which is negatively affecting the cooperative movement. The SACO Society's Regulatory Authority, SASRA, is proposing a levy order of 0.165% on the total non-withdrawable deposits, above other charges imposed on more than 4,000 SACOs across the country. If approved, this will see SASRA net at least 137.98 million shillings from 169 SACOs. Barack Ayetu SACO CEO Thomas Osoro says the levies compromise the operations of SACOs that draw membership from micro, small and medium-sized enterprises due to irregular income of the members. It's a good thought that uh, the SMEs are the most potential uh, business people compared to even salaried. SMEs have got potential to save any time compared to salaried people who save at the end of the month at a specific period. So we don't really feel it as a challenge. What we want to do more is education to our members and reorganize ourselves so that we can uh, be at par with expectations. He further says the high cost of living has seen members defaulting on loans, which compromises the growth of the circles and a multi-sectoral approach is required. Because uh, the things are a bit tight and you know we just come from the lockdown of the pandemic, which was not easy. It's a global effect. And we've had the current... Uh, war of uh, Ukraine and Russia, which is trickling down to our economy. However, we need to be resilient. We've uh, given enough education to our members. We've told them on how they need to position themselves and come out successfully. He said this during Baraka SACO's annual general meeting, where officials told members that the SACO's membership recorded a 13% growth in 2021, anchored on admission of charmers. We want to encourage our members and encourage all the business community within Nairobi. Welcome. Reporting for Prime Edition, I am Dutamo Kami. Have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 892 654 or 0734 780 Did you know that while many road traffic crashes are avoidable, human behavior continues to be the leading cause? Stop these crashes before they stop you. And never drink and drive. Usalama Barabarani starts with you. Fika Salama. This message is brought to you by NTSA and the European Union.
All right, then let's uh, speak sports. And uh, the 42nd edition of the Kenya Defense Forces Athletics Championship ended today at Ulin's Sports Complex, uh, Langata. The event was uh, being used to select a team uh, that will represent the forces in the national championships uh, scheduled between the 28th to the 30th of this month at the Kasarani Stadium. Uh, Jess Chep Kemoy won the 10,000 meters women final, while Samuel Imeta clocked 10.48 seconds to win the men's 100 meters final. While Manuera won the men's 400 meters hurdles while Judy Kien finished first in the women's 1500 meters. Our defense cabinet secretary Eugene Omalwa, who graced the event, conveyed his message of condolence uh, following the passing on of the third president of the Republic of Kenya, Mwai Kibaki. Whom we do remember as the leader who led this country in promulgating the new constitution in 2010 that ushered in the new era of devolution in our country and indeed earned the title of being the father of the second republic. All right, now for the first time, fans will be allowed into the stadium to watch the third edition of the Keep Kano Classic Continental Tour, uh, which will bring together athletic stars, including three-time Olympic champion Shelley Ann Fraser Price of Jamaica, American Shark Harry Richardson, Olympic silver medalist Kenny Bettnarek, and Ferdinand Omanyala. The event will be held on the 7th of May at the Moore International Sports Center, Kasarani. What we are looking at is uh, the possibility of this event being focused on uh, sprints and field events so that we can attract foreign athletes to come. Because normally when we have the long distance, most of them they cannot do well. But the sprints, uh, because of high altitude, they do well. And most of the top athletes have realized that they can post first times in Nairobi. This year, the, I think the great thing about the competition is that we're going to have spectators. Uh, it's the third year that um, the Kipkeno Classic has been run. You know, so uh, we, we're just excited that it's, I think it'll be a bigger tournament, a bigger competition. Uh, and we're excited to be one of the lead sponsors uh, for this event. You cannot just wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning going to run. Um, if, and, and, and you go and win in Boston, like we have just seen, if you don't train hard. And he said, Dr. Kipchoge Kaid actually said, you must work extremely hard. And with that, it's time for us to say goodbye to you. Thank you so much for your company. It has uh, been a very somber mood over here in studio as well. Um, once again, may his soul rest in peace. The third president of Kenya, Mwai Kibaki. All right, and President Uru Kenyatta, of course, announcing national morning beginning today until the burial of the late president. Uh, flags will be flying at half mast. Thank you so much uh, for choosing us tonight. Many thanks. We totally appreciate. On behalf of the team, my name is John Kagosolo. My name is Shiksha Aurora, and the sign language interpreter has been Susan Thuku. Night. Good night.
the government set up the Universal Service Fund to bring communication services to remote and hard to reach parts of the country. We are ensuring that no one is left behind in our journey to a digitally transformed nation. Communications Authority of Kenya, opening your world. Jumapili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC ungana naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi Ningetaka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday today and forevermore he is able to take you to a place of abundance he is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ Kipindi ni neno la neema ukiletewa naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose Uchaguzi mkuu wa tarehe 9 Agosti utabadilisha pakubwa taswira ya kisiasa ya taifa hili. Je, hii inamaanisha nini kwa wewe mpiga kura? Kila Jumapili saa 12 jioni, jiunge na Gladys Mungai na Harit Salim kwenye makala yetu ya Kenya ya Mua ambapo pamoja na wadau mbalimbali watajadili na kudadavua kwa kina michakato ya uchaguzi. Fanya uamuzi wa busara. Usikose kutazama Kenya ya Mua kila Jumapili kwenye runinga uipendayo ya KBC Channel 1 ili kupata mafuta kupanda kama skiza tun kwenye simu yako bonyeza star 811 star 397 hash e, na sukuru serikali kwa kuongeza bei ya mafuta sahihi niko kwa highway na kuna traffic kata kidogo naomba serikali endelee hivyo tubaki tu watu ya gasla na heavy machine peke yake pia mimi naomba huyu serikali waseme kama gari yako ni below 3000 cc gari yako ili kupata ya... mafuta kupanda kama skiza chun bonyeza star 811 star 397 hash star 811 Star 397 hash. Let the deposit ya mahali. Very good. Leo ni mema. I think I'm getting old. Kama ukuli vizuri, haupikiwi vizuri, utazeeka tu. Unajotizi wanzi huku kitchen. How long are you staying? Hai, mama Felix. Hata dakika dakika mbili, nataka kunifukuza already. The last thing I need right now is some family package. Sinilikuambia tulijuana na huu mama ya huu kijana kabla tujajuana na wewe. Nikiruti. Nataka uniambie kila kitu uwekele juu ya meza kinaga ubaga. Habari yako mama? Mimi si mama yako. Kazi yako mchezo kina Joyce ukipiga tu mdomo huko. Eh? Wewe unataka kuni advise mane na ndoa? How to make your wife to be submissive? That's all. Jan kuja kwa nyumba sangapi? Alikuwa anatoka wapi? 